Dear fellow coders, welcome to Wonder Till Coder. If you are somebody who works with a lot of social science data, you might know that a lot of input data source in your case might be a PDF. It could be a government data source, it could be a data source from an NGO or it could be a data source from a research publication. But most of these cases, this data is usually embedded inside a PDF. So now extracting table from a PDF has been a very tough task until Camelot popped in. So Camelot is a Python package, a library that can help you extract PDF, sorry, tables from PDFs or images for that matter, because now you can convert an image into PDF and then you can start extracting table from it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Camelot and then a few tips and tricks for you to extract your PDF table successfully. So let's get started and then look into the library. So this library is called Camelot and there is an interesting backstory about why it is named Camelot. So Camelot is a Python library that helps you extract tables from PDF. It's quite simple to start with, very simple API. You just import the package and then you can start reading PDF. And then once you have PDF in place, you can just start writing it into CSV. So you ultimately get an Excel or JSON or CSV or HTML or whatever, you know, the output uh, tabular data from that you would like to get. And then you can also get a pandas data frame. So this is basically about Camelot. And then Camelot also comes with a CLI command level interface. So in case like if you want to work as a CLI instead of um, writing a Python script, you can still do that. So first of all, why is Camelot very important? Why, why, why am I even talking about Camelot? So Camelot is one of its kind, I should say, because there are a lot of other packages that can help you convert or extract tables from PDF they do not work as good as Camelot works. And this I'm saying because I've used Camelot a lot in my personal experience. The second thing is most of the other solutions that you might find available online cannot let you customize or script. For example, there is a very popular solution called Tabula. Tabula, I think it's a Java based solution if I remember correctly or probably I could be wrong. So you can you can install Tabula and then um, you, you can start using Tabula, but Tabula again doesn't give you the flexibility that uh, Camelot gives you. The other solutions are usually paid solutions. So if you are somebody who wants to actually build an indie project, uh, this is even a good project where you can make a web application where people can upload their PDF and then just extract tables from it. And which is, this is one of the problems that a lot of people try to solve, but uh, they, they, they do not necessarily solve because they get bored. Sometimes data collection is very difficult. They don't want to do processing. So Camelot is uh, very good because like I said, uh, either the alternatives are not that good or alternatives do not let you customize or alternatives are not free or open source for that matter. So now let's get started and then jump into hands on and we will see how to use Camelot. Uh, the Camelot repository has a very wonderful description. You should definitely check it out if you want to. And uh, Camelot is uh, it has a bunch of contributors. It is originally started with uh, Vinayak Mehta. So Vinayak has uh, has uh, let me show Vinayak's repository. So Vinayak has got a buy me a coffee page. Like if you really find Camelot useful and then you find yourself using Camelot a lot, please make sure that you contribute something to Vinayak's um, uh, buy me a coffee to appreciate Vinayak for his open source contribution. Now. Let's get started. Uh, we are going to install Camelot and uh, like see the demo of Camelot within a Google Collab environment. I'm going to show you how to do step by step. So the first thing is um, you have to install Camelot. So the way you install Camelot is pip install Camelot Pi, Camelot Pi. Keep that in mind, Camelot Pi, not just Camelot. And you might want CV, open CV as a dependency. So you install that as well. So after you install Camelot, you need to install Gauss script for it to work. So installing Gauss script could be not a straightforward process, but uh, thanks to the application system that we have got in Unix. So you can just do apt get and install Gauss script. So now let's install Gauss script. After we install Gauss script, now it's as simple as importing Camelot. So you can either import Camelot as Camelot, or if you want to import it with an alias, you can do it. For now, I'm going to close this and then keep this uh, so that you can actually see the bigger side of this. If, in case if you further want, I'll just zoom it. So import Camelot as Camelot. So now we need a PDF for us to you know demonstrate this purpose. So I've taken a research publication which was published on Elsevier. Uh, I don't want any um, uh, case from Elsevier. So this PDF has been used only for uh, educational purpose. So this PDF talks about rainfall train, trends in 21st century over Kerala, India, and you can see it has a bunch of tables. So like there is a table here, there's a table here. There's a couple of tables that you can see. 
So our uh, objective in this uh, project or in this video is to extract this table, at least one of these tables and show you um, like what kind of roadblocks you might hit and then how you can overcome it. So uh, first to note that there are a lot of pages in it. So you have to keep in mind that uh, if you have a lot of pages, uh, then uh, of course, uh, th this is going to be computationally intensive pro pro process. So you might want to um, specify the page where you want to extract the table from. That's not mandatory. But if you do that, it's always better. So the next step is uh, you have to download the PDF and you have to upload it on Collab. So because I'm doing it on Collab, I'm uploading it. But if you are not on Collab on your local machine, you don't have to probably do that. Just download the PDF, keep it in a place where you can read it. So I've read Camelot with an alias cam and cam.read underscore PDF. And I'm giving the PDF name, which is krishnakumar.pdf. And I'm saying I want the page number two. So I'm on the second page where I've got a table. So this is what I'm saying. So once I do that, I can just simply assign it to anything. So I can call it table or PDF, anything. So let me call it table and then read it. When I read it, you can see a set of process happening. So it has been successfully read. So now when I just print this object, it says it has got one table from page number two. And when I try to print the DF, which is a pandas data frame of it, I can see what is available. As you can see, it did not give us the table that we expected. So now you might think like, what, what are you talking about, man? So you are saying so good about Camelot, but all we got is empty table. So I would request you to be a little patient so that we can tell you what is happening. So Camelot has two methods, first of all. So let me take you to the description. So Camelot extracts table using two different methods. So the methods are one is called stream. The second is called lattice. So stream uh, is one method which uh, which has, uh, you know, PDF minus uh, functionality and lattice is another method where it it is deterministic. So even if you have got like a demarcated lines between cells, it can still read it. On the other hand, stream, you know, uh, tries to calculate the white spaces between the cells and then it uh, tries to create like simulated tabular structure and then it tries to create a table around it and then it tries to extract it. So there are two methods, like I said. So the default method is, I think it's lattice. So if you want to change the method, you can say stream. So what we felt is uh, by default, like flavor, you can see the flavor. Lattice did not help us give us anything, but you can change the flavor and say, let me try it in stream method. So now you can run it again. After you run it again, you let's see how our luck is. Now we can see that there are two tables that has been read. So let's start with the table number one. Uh, table number one doesn't seem to give us anything that we want because it has basically taken a bunch of text and then assumed it is table. So that's okay. So let's look at the table number two. And as you can see, table number two exactly has what we want. So when we go here, you can see so January uh, month normal standard deviation cv probability percentage so you have month uh, the header is missing normal standard deviation cv probability percentage now you can use your pandas processing skills to say that okay i don't want my um, row 0 1 2 3 and i want to make one header and then you can start right away with your whatever you want to do data visualization processor whatever so we have successfully managed to extract a pdf from this pdf uh, when even we hit a roadblock of not extracting PDF using lattice method, but we managed to extract it using stream method. So let's quickly try with another table. Um, probably let's go to page number three. Yeah, let's go to probably page number four. In page number four, I think uh, this is page number four. We have got uh, two tables. Let's see if we can extract the first table. So let's go to page number four. I would uh, still prefer to try with lattice first. If it doesn't work out, let's see if we can use stream. Does it say, okay, it didn't extract any table. So let's go to stream. Uh, it's still loading table. It says two tables. Let's try with the zeroth table, like the first table. Okay. The first table looks a lot bigger. Um, okay. So the first table looks a lot bigger, but actually if you see, this is the table that uh, probably we wanted. No, this is not the table. So I think it did not extract. Let me check. 
okay yeah so you can see this did not work well in this case where you can do a little bit pre-processing let's try another page which is page number three page number three then two tables let me start table one and you can see you can see that it has managed to extract the month table three the month and rainfall so month and rainfall so basically all you have to do is you have to extract like uh, column number five and column number six like if, if i just extract uh, column number five columns equal to five six okay So if you just want uh, the the actual uh, month and uh, rainfall, you can just extract column number five and six, and then you would get the month and rainfall. So what I want to say is like extracting uh, tables is not like a, a straightforward thing. It's not like completely automated process. You need human beings tweaking things, like changing something. Like like I said, like you can change the method in which it extracts, and also you have to do a lot of pre-processing. But the good thing is you can actually extract tables from PDFs and images and uh, in, in case of images the logic is quite simple so you just have to convert that image into PDF and then from PDF you can start extracting. The other thing that I wanted to highlight is there are certain advanced usage tips and tricks like what you can do, um, how, uh, how you can you know like if you still do not get anything like do you want to process your background lines or um, you know how you can debug it like if you have any text in it. So there are a lot of things that you can actually do that uh, I would encourage you to check it out like if you want. But in most of my cases, I've uh, I've been able to successfully extract uh, tables just using the basic methods without even going into the advanced usage. Um, just, uh, you know, tweaking uh, the page number, tweaking uh, the type of method that we want and those things have been really helpful for me to get it. So if you want to finally ultimately write this into a table, um, like uh, it's, it's quite simple. So you just go to CSV and then you just write whatever table name that you want. Let's say like um, cam camelot demo dot csv and then you write it. So ideally you, you got it. So like if you wanted an Excel file, XLS I think to to Excel then uh, it should ideally pop up in some time. Let me refresh it. Yeah, you got camelot demo dot xls. So uh, the point is uh, extracting tables have uh, never been easier this much and then also you have uh, options to customize it like you you can tweak it like like how you uh, code you can do that and then also you can export export it in the the form that you want and uh, the other good thing is you can bulk bulk export like uh, in in one uh, page like if you have got two tables you can extract both the tables in just uh, just one um, one expression so all these things are good things about uh, camelot uh, like if you ask me um, what uh, probably what is not a good thing so i would say like there is no definite rule about when something would work um, maybe like you can look at the table like if the table is really good for example the the example table that they have given here which is uh, here so if you if you look at the table like this this is very well structured text uh, the table looks like very well um, um, separated so these kind of tables would definitely work but uh, you know there are like there, there could be cases where these kind of tables are not available in uh, the pdf that you want to extract table from 
so you may not know you just have to try it so it's 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 more of a trial and error but again you've got a very good tool to do that trial and error so this this uh, collab notebook will be shared in the youtube description and also this repository will be shared if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section otherwise uh, give, please give a shout out to vinayak um, and also the team for making an amazing library and making open source that all of us can simply use it uh, especially for people who work in social science then have to collect data from pdfs which is a very tiring task if you ask me but um, thanks to camelot you can just write it in a bunch of python lines and then you have a pandas data frame available for you to either build a model do data visualization or whatnot so thank you so much for listening to me i hope this video was helpful to you if you like it please let me know in the comment section as well and also subscribe to our channel until next video stay safe